today we're going to paint an adorable little fawn. So let's get started. In today's lesson, I did use a photograph as a model, and here it is. And then I made a template from this photograph, and here is my template. So you will want to do that, and then place your template in the middle of the page about like this. Go ahead and take your spray bottle, spray your pans of paint, and put some water in your palette. Take your liner brush and use some yellow ochre to outline your template. And you don't want to get the paint with too much water because then it will spread so it's the ratio is more paint less water and trace around because I find that if you do that your tracing of your outline will get bigger than what you may intend it to be so get that outline going, do the legs here, down and around, almost there. Come on this other side, get the back legs, it's a little bit too light. Down here. Right there. All right. Well, I didn't get the leg on here. I forgot a spot. But that's easy to go back. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and soften those lines. And you can soften those lines by just adding water to your brush. You don't need to add any more paint, just water. And we're just spreading that paint that's already on the paper. Come this way. And you can always go back and touch up areas that you don't like. And this is just a process. Okay, that's pretty good for now. Just like that. And when I'm painting, you will find that you will start to see shapes created. That's looking pretty good. Okay. Now, oh, this fawn, the color is a brown and there's a little of the rust orange type color. So let's mix both our browns. Burnt Sienna it has a color that reminds me of a clay pot to the dark brown like chocolate and mix those two together. Let's start at the tail. Now the tail is mostly brown and I want to leave some little white areas. Bring that down like that and around here
Now, this fawn has white spots, and I want to talk about that a little bit. And there's two ways you could do it, using the white paper or adding white. And in this one, we're going to do a little combination of both. Adding a little more paint to my brush, coming up around here, like that. Making the definition of the face there, a little down here, down here. And fade that. Now, at this point, I want to take my little piece of paper towel that I always have with me and do some blotting to create some white dots. I want those a little smaller, so I'm going to wad my paper towel up a little bit. Just putting some dots. And that might be enough for now. They have white spots all over, those fun white spots. I need to mix some more paint here. Again, I'm using the combination of both the browns, burnt sienna and burnt umber. And let's start here by the leg. Bring some here. That's a little dark, but no worries. I'm just going to add some water to my brush and spread some of that paint. Some of that paint. Now I could see where some of the dots I created, and I don't want to cover those up. So you want to be careful not to cover up the white dots that you created. And keep going around. And this area is a little light already, so you can create some more of those white dots by using the white paper where you see the white paper. And then start carrying some of that paint down to the legs here. See a dot there, see a dot there. And just take your time. Try and relax your, your grip on your paintbrush. Don't have a death grip on it. And relax and enjoy the process. That's looking pretty good. I need to make more of my mixture here. The two browns, burnt sienna, burnt umber. And let's put some of that right here. Bring it down on the front leg. And I want to leave some of that light area. It's not completely white, but it's white enough. Create some of those dots, spots they have. And come up to the neck here. Like that. Let's go back down and fill the finish the legs here with a paint. We have enough that we can spread it like that. That's looking pretty good. Let's bring some of that down here. Need to load my brush again. So load your brush as needed. Let's come back here. Now the legs are a little darker. And carry some of that up here, like that, and up through the back, a little bit on the side of the neck here. Let's carry some of this paint down here on the leg. A little paint can go a long ways with watercolor, like that. Need to load my brush more. I want this area up here to be a little darker. Now I made this leg a little darker and in my composition that's the way the light hits the fawn. Let's bring some more definition on the spots here. Just a little too faint. 
They have quite a few of those dots. That's looking pretty good. Let's carry some of the dark up on the back here to the tail. I need to reload my brush. Put some more paint on my palette. I'm going to start at the tip of the tail. I want to leave some of that light area. I'm going to add a little water to my brush. I don't want the paint to be so concentrated, solid looking. I want more of that translucent, wonderful watercolor that you can create by just adding a little bit of water. It's just magical to me. And then if you feel that something is out of whack and it's too dark, you can just take your brush and go on the spot and lift some of that paint out. That was a little bit too dark. And you can tell if it's too dark if that's where you, when you look at your composition and that's where your eye goes. You want you... When you're looking at a picture, you want your eye to go all around. Let's bring some of that color here. Like that. Some of that down here. Now, this leg here, it's further back, so I want it to be lighter than the leg here. So I'm it's going to I'm going to add water. A little bit to my mixture here so it's more of a faded color because it's further back so it's not as dark like that okay let's start working on the face and the ears they have those fun big ears again using our two mixtures of the burnt sienna and burnt umber Start at the top and let's bring that paint around to the forehead there and go on to the other side. Now I'm going to wipe my brush because I want some of that color out and just dip my brush in my water and spread that paint. I don't want it to be as, as dark as the top. Bring that paint around and spread it. Doing the same thing down here. Bring it around. Like that. That's looking pretty good. Now let's give it a good dry before we proceed anymore. Okay, still sticking with our liner brush. Let's use our brown mixture here and come around and put a little more shape and definition up here. And a little more on the ears here. Bring some down here. Let's come on the other side, do the same thing like that. Let's bring some of that color down here and I'm going to cover this spot. It looks doesn't look right to me. Bring it like that. I'm, I'm adding some water to my brush. I just want to fade this color. It, too much, it looks too much. Sometimes you want a line but when you don't, you can erase that line by just adding water to your brush and fade it away, just like that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. 
Now let's stop for a minute and again give it a quick dry because we want to put the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And to do that, I don't want it to run. And if I don't dry it, my lines will be blurry. Okay, that's dry. And you can always take your finger and feel the paper. And if it's damp, it's not dry enough. So then give it a couple more minutes to dry. Okay, for the eyes, they are really, really dark. So to do that, we're gonna use ultramarine blue right here. with burnt umber and that will make a dark blue black you don't want to add too much blue if you have too much blue it it'll look like a blue color and you can test it on your paper towel so the eyes are close by the ears here and they're dark and you want to make them round like that. And then on the other side, do the same thing. I'm letting a little light shine through. So you don't want to make a complete circle without a speck of light. So this one looks like it's a little bit smaller than the others. So I think I need to add little more about like that. That looks closer. Now for the nose, it's about right here. And there's a little nostril. So you want to make a slit like that. Now there's a shape of the mouth. Just about like that. Now let's give it a good dry before we do anything else. Because I don't want those lines to blur. As I look at the nose, I see that it's it needs to be a little bit more rounder. So I'm going to just add a little bit up here. Like that. That looks better. Okay. Now let's look and add some texture here on the forehead so it doesn't look flat. And we will want to use our brown mixture, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and add a touch of yellow ochre. Just want a touch to give a little more complexity. Now let's add, there's some little fur lines that come down. Now if it's too dark, wet your brush in your water to get some of that paint off. And now my brush just has more of just the water. I just want to make a slight definition like so there's depth and it looks like fur. And just bring it down here like that. You know with watercolor it doesn't take much. Just a little bit. Just like that so it looks like fur. That's looking pretty good. Now, as I look at this, I see the neckline is lost. And below the neckline, 
there's a little more color. So let's use our mixture that we have already here on our palette. And our mixture is burnt sienna, burnt umber, and a touch of yellow ochre. And put a little bit on the side here. We want a little definition. Like that. so that you can see that there's a neck. And spread that paint along. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm not reloading my brush. I'm just spreading the paint that I already have on my brush and on the paper. Just moving it around. Have fun with it. You know, if it helps you, listen to music when you are painting. At times, I do that. When I've had a stressful day, I'll just sit down, put some music on, throw my watercolors out, and start painting. And I feel so much more relaxed and better. Okay. That's pretty good. Now, below the legs... The fawn has hoofs, kind of like horses have hoofs, and it's a dark color. So I have some of my mixture right here, and I'm going to add that, and they have a little slit like that. So I'm going to do that on all four here. Need to make some more of that mixture, which again is ultramarine blue with burnt umber. Need to add one here. And one here. This one needs to be a little darker. Like that. Let's give it another good dry. Well, next we'll do the background. Now, if you don't want to do the background and leave it in relief, that's your choice. Remember, this is your composition. If you like it like that, then stop. But if you want to add some background, let's do that. Now to do that, we'll start with using our round with pointed tip brush. And we're doing it in the vignette composition type of style, which I just love. We're simplifying it. Now I do want to clean my palette here. I have some brown. And I don't want that color. Give it a quick clean. Ready to go. So let's use both our grand both our greens here and we have viridian i'm going to put a touch of viridian and a touch of sap green and put some grass and some of the grass is long and just we're not going to go all the way to the edge of the page here just about no oh, like there Put some of that tall, tall grass all along the side. And again, we're stopping about here. Like that. Now I want to make some of this tall grass has some other little shapes, kind of like that. Some little grains that you see. Those wild, wild grass growing in the forest. And I think we need one more right here, and that should do it. Okay, let's give it a dry.
Now I want to add some depth to this. So let's take our sap green and add some yellow ochre. It's going to give it a more olive type of color. We want some little more. Some little yellow type of blades of grass in here. Just a few little strands here. Some over here. And then I want to make some more impression that there's a ground there. And I'm just taking my brush sideways and blurring some of that color. Just a little bit. You don't need much. I don't like that. That's good. Now I think we need to add, again, I like creating three tones, one light, one medium. This one is lighter, this is medium, and then a little dark. You don't want to overdo the dark because it can be distracting to the painting. So let's take some of our sap green here and add some burnt umber. And that's going to make it a darker green, more like a pine green. And add some of that here. Just a little bit all over. Just, And you might find it easier to start on one side and then work across your picture. And you just want to randomly Put those spots where it looks right and have fun with it. This is your day to create and just be here now. Don't worry about the dishes or anything like that. Just enjoy the wonderful colors that you have with watercolor. I love these colors. I think that's about it. Let's give it a good final dry. I thought maybe I was going to use some white on this, but I did not. And, you know, sometimes with watercolor, if you can't, if you end up covering too much, you, you can use your white. And I'm just going to show you how, what it will look like. I'm not going to add a lot of white, but you can take your white and just add some little spots and that will give it maybe another dimension you probably you probably will not see it or think that it makes much of a difference and that's okay i'm just going to add just little random white spots And that's enough, you know, it's really easy to overdo watercolor. So that's why when you're doing watercolor, you want to take your time, go slow, take a sip of coffee, get some water, and then you can come back to it. And that's the fun of watercolor. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I sure did. See you next time when we're going to paint a baby owl. And here's the model we'll, we will be using.